All our infrastructure was built for a climate that doesn't exist anymore. With very little snow this winter, followed by a dry April and dry May, fire spread rapidly through this Nova Scotia neighborhood and took 151 homes with it. You know, that outer suburb of Halifax has grown quite significantly in the last several decades. And so now we're putting people in situations where there's a greater chance of a fire. Fire crews did their best to contain the wildfire raging through Tantalan using helicopters and water bombers, but the extreme heat went deep down into the ground. Chief strategy to secure the perimeter of this fire was to bring in a large volume of heavy equipment and to dig down and scrape away the soil right down to mineral soil so there's nothing left to build. A separate fire was also burning at the same time in Barrington Lake, the largest in Nova Scotia's history, prompting the call for firefighting resources as far away as Montana. And this is only the beginning of wildfire season. With no lightning reported in the areas at the time, these fires were most likely human-caused. However, the lack of rain and warm temperatures allowed the forest to become tinder dry, with strong and steady winds acting like a blow dryer to make matters worse. This isn't unique to the situation in Nova Scotia. Warming temperatures from fossil fuel emissions is making these kinds of conditions more likely in many locations. We're most confident in the temperature predictions that are coming with climate change, and so the whole country is, is warming. So I think in the longer term, we're, we're looking at essentially just a longer fire season and more intense fire season across the country just as the uh, country warms. He says the global average surface temperature has only increased by about one degree or so since pre-industrial times, but in the north, accelerated warming may be upwards of three degrees Celsius. So that contributes to the wildfires in northern Alberta and the southern part of the territories. When you add in fires in Nova Scotia, Canada is in for one historic year of acreage burned. How Ray Wu is trying to build resilience capacity for local individuals and communities to help them to adapt and respond to events being impacted by climate change. He wants people to have emergency response plans and says disasters like wildfires affect three components, natural environment, built environment, and social and human environment. So building an emergency road is a one part within the built environment. On the other side, it's even more things we need to do. For example, we need to build a mental health emergency response service for the local residents affected by the wildfire. Wu is currently reaching out to the community members impacted by wildfires to help develop a plan for future incidents like this that may occur.